right? Right. How you doing, all right? Sound, mate, yeah. Excellent, sound. excellent. Have you been to Morris Lubricant in Shrewsbury? Once or twice, mate. So, yeah, yeah, we make yeah, the yeah. oil there, okay? So now we're looking at how we use the oil. So um, the sector we're looking at today is off-highway. We're highway. in a quarry, mate. We're in a quarry. We're in a quarry. You can't miss it. You can't miss it. So the off-highway sector, of course, is, is a massive sector in terms of the types of equipment we can we can be looking at. So, so this would be so what sort of construction industry construction, off highway, off highway you know, yeah, kind of landscaping that okay. kind of thing. Okay, so, okay. Now, this this particular episode is about engine oils. Yeah. Okay? So we'll yeah. be looking at engine oils. Um, so, so engine oil technology, okay, has to range from everything from these sort of little bobcat type, um, you know, skid steers. Yep. Which could be 25, 30 horsepower, all the way up to four and a half thousand horsepower, depending on what type of equipment we're looking mm -hmm. at. Um, but interestingly, the actual engine oil technology is pretty much the same between that 30 horsepower engine and the four and a half, you know, four and a half thousand horsepower engine. Okay. Very similar. Um, so we're still here in front of a, a Volvo hauler today. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. We've got big old thing, isn't it? Big old thing. What, 16 litres of uh, Volvo power in there. Yeah. Um, big old lump in that. Yeah. So this, is, this, this, this sector particularly is where you need the grunt. Okay. There's a lot of heavy lifting, a lot of heavy carry. And so mm -hmm. you need a lot of low, you know, low rift grunt, basically. Um, so these engines aren't, aren't particularly small in this particular environment. As I say, you can have smaller ones if you're landscaping your garden. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. This is obviously this is a different one. This is this is obviously on the same Volvo hauler. So, so there's particular requirements that engine oil has got to be able to cope with. And one of the biggest problems in this sector actually is soot. Soot is a, is a big a big contaminant for engine oils in this sector because they don't do road speed. So like even a tractor would these days, you know, 55k boxes on a tractor. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. You're never going to get this going down the motorway with 45 tonnes of uh, aggregate on the back of it. No, you know, no, no. you're never going you, to see be, that. Yeah, yeah. Ever. the five all will yeah, be all yeah, happy. Yeah, yeah, turn, <laughs> turn a few heads if that happens. Yeah. Um, so, but because of that kind of workload, um, and because you don't get sort of the same kind of heat soak on the engines, um, you get sort of incomplete combustion, which creates a lot of soot. And soot loading in these types of engines is a, is a massive issue that... The lubricant yeah, has got I to cope with. I thought that because yeah. I just because these are sat just constant revs all the time. I yeah. thought it would be kinder on. Yeah, it's kinder the on the, it's kinder on the engine components, but it's not kinder on the combustion process. Right. It makes it incomplete. It feels more subtle. Yeah, and and so you so, get more soot in the oil. You get more soot in the oil. So and the how do you deal got, with that? So uh, so the oil has got to have there's, there's several things. Soot soot is pretty bad because it'll thicken the oil up prematurely. Yeah. And the oil has got to be at a certain viscosity or thickness so it flows around and keeps things nice and cool. Um, so it'll thicken it up. Um, the other problem with it is this soot is quite abrasive as well. It's quite an abrasive material, so you've right. got all that going around. Um, so the oil has got to have a, something called good dispersancy. So dispersant... Uh, you can't mess that up. No, I haven't. Dispersancy. Good dispersancy good dis is okay. a good one. Remember that. Yeah, yeah, Sorry yeah. into your general conversation. <laughs> if you can. Be on me. So, Go on. So dispersancy. So these are molecules which basically are um, kind of um, attracted to the soot molecule, the soot particles, and they keep them from sticking together. So they disperse uh, them right. okay. in the body of the lubricant. So by by dispersing them, it means that the oil continues to flow correctly. Right. Okay? So dispersancy is very important, and and also uh, wear protection. Because if you've got an abrasive material floating around, you've got to protect all the components from wear yeah, as well. Yeah. So there are certain engine oil specifications which are which lend themselves to this particular market, but very good at, at dispersancy control and, and, and wear protection as well. So that, that's that's a got to be a big tick for any lubricant. Otherwise, it'll wear. Basically, you'll either wear it out prematurely. Cams particularly tend to go quite quickly uh, with too much soot in there. Um, but if you thicken the oil up prematurely, you could block oilways, oil feeds, oil galleries. Then you've got an oil starvation problem. Yeah, them big if, problems. If that's going to a main Big problems. Boom, that's gone. So go on, what sort of service intervals are we looking at with something like this? Um, well, again, like any of these markets, the manufacturer will give you a, an assigned service. What was it, 500 hours? 500 hours, is, typically. Is that right, typically? Yeah, okay. because... Okay. You can extend beyond that with, with oil monitoring. You can do that, but 500 hours because say it's, it's because of the contamination from things like soot is a big problem. That's, That's what the kills the lubricant. Reason. This kind of workload is is, is tough. I mean, maybe but it's some tough. But you still have the same sort of intervals. You think it'd be still the sort same sort? Of... Oh, so yeah. Okay. Well, every but this is a specific difference. oil though. This is a specific yeah. oil for this compared to a tractor. Yeah. Well, it's... this this is this will be a Volvo specification that goes into this particular one. It's a Volvo. Yeah. Um, and part of that specification will be things like dispersancy for for. For soot control, yeah, you know, yeah. so it is kind of tuned into this requirement. Um, but of course, 
additional to all that, I mean, you have got to look after all the engine components as well, keep them all clean and all the rest of it. Um, but you've also got after treatment devices on. Uh, we've spoken about after treatment devices before. Yeah. So to be Add blue DPF, absolutely diesel oxidation systems. catalyst. Yeah. So so if this was the latest one, this would be a tier four stage five compliant engine. Okay. So you will have diesel oxidation catalyst, diesel particulate filter, add blue catalyst, all bolted on there. And, and they, they only perform correctly if you've got the correct chemistry in the engine oil, because you always burn a little bit of lubricant in the combustion chamber, because yep. you're lubricating, obviously, you know, top compression ring, valve guides, valve stems. You're always going to incinerate a little bit of lubricant. Mm -hmm. That's always going to happen. But those, the chemistry, those compounds, when you incinerate them with those high temperatures, you break them up into their component parts. They get, you know, they get blown out of the, the combustion chamber with the exhaust gases, down down with the exhaust gas stream into the after treatment devices. Mm -hmm. Now, all it. this is what can happen. So certain chemistries, for example, sulfur and phosphorus will poison the ad blue catalyst. So that'll stop working. Uh, it'll poison the diesel oxidation catalyst as well. So that will stop working. And of course, the engine management systems will alert you to that. So as soon as it, it sees everything's out of kilter, Okay, the exhaust gases coming out of the exhaust pipe aren't where they should be. Flashing lights may have limpo mode, half power mode to get that rectified. Um, and then some of the some of the ash which is created from burning that lubricant can actually then block the diesel particulate filter prematurely as well. So when it tries to regenerate, burns the carbon off the soot, but that metallic ash stays behind and gradually it can't get back to the normal working pressure. And then that's it. The all the lights flash on. And yeah, it, so. limp mode. Limp mode. Yeah, so, we yeah. don't want that. We don't want that. We don't want that. So, so balancing the chemistry, right? The chemistry's got to be good enough to to look after the engine, all the components, keep it clean, disperse all the soot, do all these lovely things. Um, but at the end of the day, it can't reduce the the life of the after treatment devices, because on these things they're expensive. Because you don't have a space constraint like you would on a on a, on a little hatchback car. Mm -hmm. You know, you can only put so so many things underneath there. You don't have space constraints, so you tend to have bigger DPFs, bigger diesel oxidation catalysts, because you've got the room to do it. But of course, the bigger they come, the more expensive they are to replace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that can be a, a big issue when you're talking about saving pennies on a lubricant, where you'll have thousands of pounds worth of damage to after treatment. Yeah, the old voices. saying, boy, penny wise, pound foolish. Absolutely. Hey. I'm getting those t-shirts printed as we speak. So the other interesting part of this market is the use of biofuel so though we've got biofuels at the pumps okay and but bio in what sense what, what, what? so it might contain plant, plant matter i mean fuel fuel has improved dramatically as you know but the problem with biofuel and there'll be more biofuel used as we go go ahead because obviously that, that's part of reducing our fossil fuel um uptake if you like yeah um is that biofuels they, they do the job but they can have a, a side effect in terms of contamination of the engine lubricant so on burnt biofuel, if it gets down into the sump of the engine, okay, in, in, in with the oil basically, um, you can start to get varnishes and lacquers formed from it. So varnishes and lacquers are kind of high temperature deposits. Um, and if you've got high temperature deposits forming uh, in the engine, then th th those components, the actual tolerances will be changed. Okay, so you don't get the same efficiency and operational efficiency. Never. Yeah, so it'll build up this, this hard, not know that. almost like a shell act. I don't know, I know biofuels yeah. are giving you an issue with blocking fuel fill yeah. up and causing well, like do that. seaweed in the tank. Yeah, absolutely. But I didn't know it would cause a problem with the lubricant. Well, yeah, I mean, storage is, is a big problem, of course, as well, as you Got say, for stirring stirring growth. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but also, it can, dilute, it can dilute the lubricant as well. That's the other harmful side effect to it. So oh. if you're relying on a certain viscosity grade of lubricant, to look after your mains, your big end bearings, all the critical parts, and it's getting thinner and thinner because you're getting um, dilution from, from, from biofuel. Of course, that will impact and that will have a problem that'll generate wear issues and various other things um, and, and reduce the life of the lubricant as well. So if you're trying for your 500 hours, you might not quite make it there if you're dumping loads of biofuel in, into the sump. So, so go on, how are you accounting for that? So, so or how is Morris yeah, accounting for Morris, that? Okay, so when, when we're looking at formulating these lubricants, one of the things we have to make sure is that the, the specifications that we're formulating to and we're providing our customers with um, are capable of combating some of these side effects. So a lot of the new specification developments coming through are to try and handle the, the ingress of biofuels. Um, so we, we don't get the, the, the varnishes and the lacquers. We don't uh, we don't get issues with with wear from 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 fuel dilution. Mm -hmm. So, 
it's a big step change, but we, we can only see more and more biofuels being used going forward. There won't be less, obviously. Um, so this, this, but this can be a problem if it goes unchecked. And it's the only thing to do, of course, be using a, you know, a, a certain percentage of biofuel. But it can have a harmful side effect if the lubricant you're using isn't fine-tuned to combat some of those problems and issues. Interesting. So, um, so one of the other kind of um, challenges for, uh, and it depends on the environment. At the moment, we're, we're, we're quite okay. We're in the middle of a quarry, so everything's quite good here, okay? But if you're a couple of miles underground, of course, okay, if you're in a mining environment mm -hmm. where off-highway equipment is used, um, or if, if you're in a different part of the world where you've got lots of high humidity, for example, water is something we have to be, uh, water vapour is something we have to be mindful of. Um, so any equipment which is shut down for a period of time, which breathes and brings in water vapour. So that could be, say, that could be humidity, depending on whereabouts you are on the globe, basically. Or if you're underground, that can be quite humid underground. So one of the things that a lubricant and an engine lubricant in this particular case has to deal with is any rusting and corrosion issues. Yeah. yeah particularly yeah. in the air spaces of, of, of the crankcase, etc. So, So you need good rusting and corrosion control as well from a well-formulated engine oil to cope with that. You know, to, to be able to, to plate out certain active chemistries which will form a barrier between the atmosphere where the water vapour is and the actual metal itself or the alloys, whichever construction materials are being used in that particular engine. So rusting and corrosion is something that has to be dealt with as well. So correctly formulated engine rule has to tick that box because this equipment can be used in, in a thousand different kind of climates and environments. And work the applications. Condensation. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Condensation. Now I would Can't never have thought. Killer. I would never yeah. have thought. So that's another box we have to tick. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. But you know, I do. I would have always have thought that if these are hot enough for long enough, it would evaporate the condensation. Yeah, off. it it is. I mean, generally it does. And for short use, yeah. you would get yeah. condensation. If you've got up. specialist equipment, of course, where it it is just it's only brought out when it needs to be brought out. That's when, of course, you can have the problems. Right. Um, but for things which are working almost, some of these could be working 24 hours a day. Yeah. You know, they have a still change the operator. They don't, yeah, they don't, they don't yeah, the driver. Yeah. They don't change. So the, you wouldn't get a condensation issue then. You wouldn't because right. everything's okay. not. It's just the short, the, the, the stuff that's used for short. It's short yeah. Spaces, it's it? the layup okay. issues that you, you've got to you've got okay. to cope. As long as okay. you've got oil splashing around in there, you're laughing. But as soon as you, everything stops and it cools down, and the condensation. That's when you can. Up the cold. Up the cold. Interesting. That cycle is 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 not the best. Sound. Sound. So basically, it's like it's like any any of these applications. First of all, always consult what the manufacturer's requirements are in terms of lubricant specification for the engine. Yep. Okay, so whatever that is, follow that guideline. Then look at the service interval again, as we talked about, five hundred hours could be more, could be less, depending on what that manufacturer specifies. Mm -hmm. um, that needs to be in there as well. So get the right oil quality for the service interval program as specified by the OEM and you've got to maximise the life out of these kind of beasts, basically. Um, because again, like any sector we've spoken about previously, this, this is a workhorse. This is somebody's business we're talking about. This is not yeah, a hobby. It's got to be out working every day. It's got to be reliable. It's got to be, absolutely. So as soon as it sends up in a workshop, A, there's not the earning downtime. the brass, is it? It's not earning the brass. Yeah. It's the downtime. It's the expense. So, so a correctly qualified lubricant um, will help keep that out of the workshop. So you're, you're maximising your returns on this. And these aren't cheap to buy either. Yeah, these units can be a lot, a lot of yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot um, of money. A lot of money. So you want them out, out in, obviously, in the quarry, in this particular example, um, earning their crust. But it's all about, as I say, just being very pedantic about the type of quality of lubricants you're going to choose and then following the OEM's guidelines on service intervals. Then you've got something which will last a long time. For you got you. it, Morris, all the way. Yeah, hey, very, very okay, cool. You're right. Absolutely. <laughs> Sound job. Sound job. Yeah. So yeah. So as I say, critical part of how that engine works is the lubricant, and as I say, with with especially emissions, emissions are continuing to be pushed and pushed all the time now. Um, um, so a particular number now is something we have to think about is the size of the particles yeah, coming out. Yeah, so, yeah. so the finer all these filters become the more fine-tuned the, the actual chemistry has to be in the lubricants as well. So that's evolving all the time as all these after-treatment devices and demands put on these engines evolve as well. So so if you want to see any more content like this or videos with Guy, then visit the Morris Lubricants website or our YouTube channel.